Hey everybody, welcome back to Breakfast with Bob from Challenge Daytona, brought to you by Toyota, the Daytona International Speedway, NASCAR Foundation, the YMCA, and the city of Daytona Beach, coming off a big win at La Quinta last week. Mr. Lionel Sanders, how you doing, Lionel? What is the date today? Are we in Kona again? I don't this know. This is really strange. This is really to strange. see you so right? early. Uh -huh. I know, I know. Uh -huh. Well, I'm good, Bob. Year, <laughs> I think last year we did uh, with Tri Club. We did one uh, in. All right, winter. cool, cool. We're we're doing multiples. Great, now, Lionel. great, awesome. So you got to ride the track today. What'd yeah, you think? it was really cool. It was really fun. Uh, I mean, you're not going to find any faster surface than that. So I did. You know, uh, we probably shouldn't have done it the day before the race, yeah. but two hard laps. 380 watts got me 49 kilometers an hour so i would love to do like a 40k time trial here one day because i'm pretty confident i could go maybe like 48 minutes or something like that that would be wouldn't that be fun to yeah i think we should do that maybe on sunday morning we'll we do a 40k tt we as set well that up. Uh -huh. get, get uh -huh. cam in here the unofficial and, and uh -huh. sevy uh -huh. and just do a that sounds fun that time trial world championship yeah so last week, La Quinta, two years in a row, you've won that race? Yeah, it was good. It was a tough one. Had some some learning experiences. The water was really cold. and uh, so cold. Yeah, for some reason, I, I, I was afraid because the water's in the 50s, and so I didn't get in for a warm-up, and that Not was a, a huge up. mistake. Yeah, yeah. and, and uh, I mean, I didn't do it the year previous, but it, and it didn't affect me, but this it time it affected me. It was last year, I think. It was a lot colder last year. That's why I didn't get in, but this particular time, for whatever reason, it affected me really, really negatively. You sort of get hyped. You, all of a sudden, you're... I don't even know. I don't know how to describe weird. it. Yeah, you just I, just, I couldn't get a breath. Right. And uh, and then you then you try and, you know, for me, I try to make that pack, that second pack. You right. Know, you got to start off really hard. So you put those two things together and you go into complete hypoxia. And it was like right down to my toes was like hypoxic. Yeah. And I, fortunately, I knew what was happening. So I just, I chilled, right. reset the system. Probably took me 400 meters to reset the system. Uh, and then, and then I was starting to be able to swim, and then by 600 I could actually swim. But that should have been done in the warm up, not in the race, <laughs> unfortunately. So that made the day a little harder than I than I think it had to be because I, I feel like I'm in pretty good swim shape right now. I swam pretty much a lifetime best swim deficit just a month prior in uh, in Los Cabos. Right. But anyways, worked really hard uh, on the bike. It was actually one of my best. I'm finally starting to get back into good form, uh, like close to my, my lifetime best kind of form. I, right. I, I did a, a season best 90 minute power to catch the front. Uh, and then, so then came off the bike with about a minute and a half lead. And uh, the run was, was uh, not the greatest experience. Had to, had, to hit run, the, had to hit the washroom a couple times, so it wasn't the greatest experience yeah. ever. Uh, but. I know without you take the washroom breaks out, I know I was in 110 shape. So f I feel like I'm starting to get back into some good form. So it's, it's, end of the season, though, is coming. So we'll take some rest and hopefully say, we can go above that next year. Well, yeah, and you, you missed a lot of season with the, with the injury. The, the, are you feeling now like, okay, I, I feel like my season's just getting going? Or are you ready for a Yeah, break? no, I don't want to take a break at yeah. all. But I think that's a great time to take a break. It is. Yeah. So, uh, and, and I learned a huge lesson this year in that I took three months literally completely off running just light, soft pedaling, mm -hmm. biking, uh, and no kicking in the swim, all pull buoys swimming for three straight months. Uh, and it, then it took me five months to get into, let's say, peak 70.3 form. Like so, Augusta, so yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so now I know um, that you can take recovery. I wouldn't take three months recovery, but you can take, you know, a fair amount of recovery, back. and it's good for you, and it'll come back actually really quickly. So that I can, I can, from experience now, take my recovery and right. my off season with confidence. So when you look back at, at Kona, and I mean, you've been racing a long time, and to get to the point where you're not drinking, uh, did, did that surprise you when you look back yeah, at it later? You're it like, doesn't what? surprise, I mean, it doesn't surprise me because I was so infatuated because of the injury, I was so infatuated this is why you need a, you need at least a, a training advisor or someone right. looking at you from you know ten thousand yeah, feet yeah, looking yeah. in at what you're doing because I, I had really fallen out of shape and I had all these memories of things I'd done before from from being fit and so I was just completely infatuated because even training into Mont Tremblant I didn't really ever push myself very much I was just trying to get some mileage right. in so then after Tremblant when I finished the race I wasn't injured and I was like okay now's the green light to actually start pushing. And so then I just became infatuated with trying to get myself back into shape. 
And I literally, the night before, Aaron and I are doing, you know, making the bottles and stuff. And she's like, so what's your nutrition plan? And this should have raised the red flags. And I'm like, oh, I don't really have a nutrition plan, right? And th this is the comical part is I made literally a YouTube video one year prior with my nutrition plan and told myself to watch this video before right. so that I don't make the mistakes that I've made. Like I made a video for myself and I didn't watch it though, unfortunately. Everybody else did. Yeah, Their I nutrition mean, I, wish I, I really wish I would have. Um, <laughs> And so, yeah, it just was, it was, uh, yeah, rookie. I mean, just, and these are, this is why you need a, an advisor from 10,000 feet up asking you those questions. Right. Like, what's your nutrition strategy? And if I had said, well, I don't know, I'll drink when I'm thirsty, whatever. I mean, uh, someone who knows me will know that my sweat rate is so astronomical that to drink when you're thirsty is Too ridiculous. Late. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, I mean, I'm sweating at over two liters an hour on the bike in Kona conditions, and I consumed total five bottles on the bike. So I'm already coming off the bike with nearly six, seven pound deficit of body weight. Wow. And at best on the run, I'm sweating at three liters an hour on the run. At best, if you ran a 245, I would be down nine pounds. And if you consumed 1.5 liters per hour, which is a massive consumption rate while running, I would be down nine pounds on the run. Just the run. Just the run. So, so you add those two things together. I mean, you don't it, that you won't get to that point. Your body will shut down yeah. long before you can push yourself to that point. And so, anyways, long story short, I mean, I lost 17 pounds in the race. Did you really? And yeah, I felt like near death. Like I really did. It was. I was. It took me an hour to get from the finish line to my, my dad picked me up over on um, the corner, you know, the oh, gym yeah. there, the, the gym there, yep. just on, on Ali'i and, yeah, yeah. and uh, um, Kuakini. Yep. It took me an hour to walk from there. Like I was vomiting, like I physically couldn't walk. Like it was like, I never experienced it before. It kind of scared me. I even said to my mom, I was like, I hate this sport. Like I hate it. Like I don't want to do this. And well, that was what it does yeah. To you. What I yeah. Do, no, it doesn't have to be like that. No, if you're done your <laughs> that's nutrition, not the sport. That's no, that's that was, ignorance of the sport and you. the yeah. and the and what's required to to actually do the sport and to race it well. Yeah. And anyways, I mean, just an absolute rookie. And it just it really hurt because it's like I already learned this lesson. I already knew this. Like I wore a camel back in 2015. I that's that. how cognizant I was in 15 because I had made this exact error in Ironman Texas 2015, where I was severely dehydrated like this. And anyways, uh, yeah, all I can say is the, the positive that came from it is I brought David Tilbury Davis back on because I, I need someone to be looking at me and analyzing me and giving me feedback from 10,000 feet. I, I just think everybody does. I think you, I really do. I That's the you lesson. Can't, you, can't, you can't see yourself, no. uh, you know, objectively, no. especially because I was just so infatuated with one aspect, which, which is it's good to be, as an athlete, I think you should be infatuated with getting yourself in great form and leave, you know, the, at least the, the major parts of that thinking, that deeper thinking, to your, to your advisor or to your coach or whatever. Yeah, and, and that was a big lesson that came from it. And I think that'll pay dividends. I see, I truly see the, the value of that. And that's gonna pay dividends, I think, for a decade, hopefully. I remember uh, Pete Jacobs, after he won Ironman 2012, he was like, you know, there was sometimes this last year I was sort of self-coaching myself and there was workouts that I decided, you know, maybe I don't feel, feel like doing that today. And I didn't do it, so I think I'd just be self-coached. And I just think it's so hard because it's, you know, it's like, well, last year I had success not doing these workouts, so I just won't do them this year. Sure. It's like every year your body yeah. is different, you're yeah. different. Yeah, you need someone to be looking at what's happening. You need a bit of accountability. I haven't struggled with accountability. Like, I've always been good at pushing myself no and, and not, not, you know, some, I'd say for me, one of the big ones is the opposite. Yeah. Sometimes, like, for instance, going into Indian Wells, I got a pretty bad cold, and I mean, I was like pushing it real far in, probably too far. And like one day, I basically just got out of the pool because like I was, I was so yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when a coach should pull you back. And so it depends on your personality, sort of what you need from a coach, right? right. Everyone's different. But for me, yeah, I get down these like these these pathways where the only thing I can think about or matters is training analysis and and you know constructing good workouts and executing the workouts. But that's at the expense. I mean, you can be in the, the greatest form ever in Kona. If you don't drink, you, it doesn't matter. Like, it's a biological limitation that you have to, you, in order to perform to your absolute best, you need to, you need to have under control. And so yeah. that, that, that stuff is, is equally as important as the training. And it changes. Right? I remember 
you know, he's got Tinley finishing Ironman New Zealand, and it went so well for him. After he won, he like was like bursting through all the media. Just give me a pen and pencil. He wrote down everything he ate, exactly oh, sure. what he ate. It went through his next race, did the same thing, and blew to the moon. So sure. you just you just don't know what yeah. that particular plan. Well, might not work the next yeah, time. Yeah, well, I've raced well in temperate conditions. Like Arizona's my right. has been my best Ironmans, but it was 60 degrees at the high, right. overcast. Yeah. So these things actually are very are a very little or significantly less important because the temperature is a lot lower, the humidity is a lot lower, the sun exposure is a lot less. So you can get away with a lot, and you mm -hmm. can actually think, oh, I've got a really good handle on things. But if you execute what you did there in Kona. Anymore. You literally might not even make it to the finish. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was close to that point, uh, undoubtedly, to the point of body saying, time yes. to go night-night. <laughs> I remember when uh, doing Ironman way back in the day, and we did what we called the pole-to-pole uh, -pole marathon. We ran a pole and you know, walk, ran to an aid station and walked the aid station. Yeah. So you and Alistair <laughs> were basically running. Yeah, we were you, you were doing the, the opposite, walk in between and try and run. <laughs> run, run through the aid yeah, station. That was yeah. about what it felt like anyway. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It was interesting. That was an interesting experience Did for sure. Chat at yeah, all? we chatted a little bit, and I was like, "So you having fun?" He's like, "No." It's like, <laughs> yeah, there was may have been the F word a few times in there yeah, too, yeah. but I won't say that part. Yes. Uh, but yeah, we were both deeply, deeply humbled, and uh, and and it was great to have someone to suffer to next with. to you. Absolutely. Yeah, like especially an Olympic, Olympic gold champion. Medals. Yeah, yeah. I didn't feel so bad. I still felt horrible about myself, but. Uh, yeah, that was an interesting experience. <laughs> Wait, but you were you ran your weren't you like in fourth place during a run for a certain yeah, period? Yeah, I got into uh, third actually. Third, yeah, yeah. yeah, it came off with Keenlay, and yeah. then I was I was clipping on his heels, and he yelled at me. And Did it's he? the first time he yelled at me. I felt really bad. I apologized at least several times, uh, and so yeah, so I was like, he was yelling at me to get off his heels, so I went in the front. But I knew the game was over for <laughs> yeah. me. This is not where I'm not trying to push the pace or something here. I'm just trying to get off your heels. So. Uh, and then that was the end of my race. Yeah. Another mile or so later. What do you? Yeah, thinking, it was rough. What are you thinking here? What do you? Is this like? Is I'm this, gonna smash this thing all out from start to finish. You're just I'm going thinking. for it, right? Yeah, this is, like this the is perfect... you don't need to think about. I, this is now. This is getting to the point where I'm gonna try and drink like one bottle on the bike because like, this is gonna be all out. Totally. And um, it'll be cool. It'll be cool. Yeah, it'll be fairly cool. I mean, you're still going to sweat quite a bit, but I think you have enough on board, right? I mean, I've been able to get away in 70.3s, you know what I mean, with not really thinking. Right. Once again, it gives you a false sense of how good you've got these things under control. You say, oh, I raced a 70.3 really well, but it's right when it's becoming a problem at four hours, right? right yeah. At 70.3 intensity. Anyways, this is like it's going to be, I think, 25% or 30% more than 70.3 intensity. So, uh but you like we'll that. find out at the end, but yeah. I, I mean, I don't think you're going to be able to drink much more than a bottle on the bike and a gel, and maybe one gel and a couple of couple of sips on the on the run, just because you're going all out. So, uh, I'm excited to see. I mean, I just like I said in in Indian Wells, I pushed 354 for two hours, so I'm pretty confident I can do 380 on here for for approximately. I think it'll take about an hour and 15, hour and 16 for the bike, uh, and I'm just really excited to smash a run and not. Because right when you'd be blowing up and bonking, the run will be over, right? You right. Can't, you can't run it like True. this. Is how you, this is how a lot of guys run in a seventy point three, and then you you end up dying in the final seven kilometers or so. But at least here you can yes. cross the finish line and it's over. So <laughs> this will be a really cool distance to race. Really interesting race. How long did it take you to recover mentally from this last Kona? I'm still recover. I don't think I'll recover until the day of the race, until we finish year. the race next year. Yeah, it was just so to commit the same error multiple times like that, and to have two bad conas in a row. Then you start to question. Ooh, maybe I don't have it anymore. Maybe that's it for me. And I don't believe that's it. And and I think no. you know uh, these seventy point three last couple seventy point three, especially the last one, have been good because I'm starting to feel like, oh wait a minute, I you know, mean. I was feeling like I, I can get down to 109, 108 pace off the bike. No and so to get to finally get back down and, and push big power and then also run a really good and still feel like, oh, I got lots to go. I feel like I'm, you know, getting back to where I was in 2017, mm -hmm. for instance. So, and the same is true of the Ironman. I feel like I, at least after Kona 2017, I finished and I was like, oh, there's so much more to go or so much faster to go. And then you have two horrible races and you're like, oh, maybe that was it. I'm going to be a second place guy you never for know forever. Have the best. Yeah, but the, the fact is, you know that Ray ran 251 that day, and you are a mid 240s guy. 
unfortunately, Kona uh, for me is always going to be hard on the run. You know what I mean? Indian Wells, I ran well because it's very, it was very cool. Right. So I'm going to have to race Kona. I think a little differently. I think I'm going to have to be a good biker. You're and I have sort to of, go yeah, I sort of, of and that's how I did well in, in 2017. Yeah. I rode really hard. You know, caution to the wind. Uh, and then I hung on for dear life on the run. And I mean, I think for me and how my body's built, that's, I don't know if I'm going to be able to run 240 low there. So I'm going to have to that's, figure out a way to win. And it, one of those is going to be swimming faster than 52 minutes. That's for damn certain. You're swimming 50 and riding 405. And then, I uh, think honestly, that, I think that's going to be, that's yeah, it's going formula. to have to be something and in then that 250. vicinity, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it. which seems astronomical, but, but nah, I mean, it doesn't to, seem yeah. out of range. For yeah. I mean, look at what you did a couple of years ago when you know with the two fifty one. So that, that, I mean that that all the rest of that seems reasonable to me. The project, it's just a big project, and we'll find out. But if you're it's digging the project. We'll find out. <laughs> I'm digging the project. You yeah, are. yeah. Very very soon after Kona this year, I was I was saying, you know what? That was just a that was my own error caused right. by my own self user error yeah. and immediately i messaged david and i was like i mean i can't do it alone like i need someone to help me and you and i worked together really well in 2006 late 2016 all my best performances were then would you come back on and help me as you did and he said absolutely so Very so cool. i think i think it's going to pay dividends just somebody to because you're such a cerebral athlete you you need someone to bounce stuff off of absolutely and you need I, I, you need someone to tell you like you're missing this right right and and i'm you know i can be hostile so i need a particular person to work with cuz so, i can be like you know mind your own business guy but then i stews in my mind and i'm like <laughs> oh hang on a second you're right right yeah. that's usually how it goes yeah yeah uh, and so I need someone who understands me from that standpoint, uh, and David definitely understands. So if you yeah, can't get Sebi to coach you, yeah, that yeah, that would be cool. But uh, <laughs> he's uh, he's pissed off at me right now for clipping his heels. So <laughs> Still? unfortunately, no, he's oh, yeah. not. I don't I don't think he is. But <laughs> <laughs> he was in the race, that's for sure. <laughs> Lyle, always a pleasure to chat with yeah, you. Yeah, how's the golf Bob? game? Oh, horrible, man. Perfect. Horrible. I played with Greg Welch, actually, oh, the he's other very day. Good. He's really good. Welch is embarrassing, is, unfortunately, Welch, for actually, me. I remember we were, <laughs> we were doing a speed golf tournament, right? Uh, Which you've got to come play sometime. Yeah, that'd be great. And I was in car, a golf cart with a golf pro. And Welch, back then, was like, you know, 78, 80, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. I said, how long would it take Welch to be like a top golfer? He goes, you mean like, like a pro? He goes, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, probably only about 10 years. <laughs> yes, <laughs> He's shooting exactly. 70. I'm like, oh, my God, this exactly. one is horrific. Uh -huh. Ooh, Golf is, yeah, hard to wrap oh, your head around. Yeah. Yeah. Th thank Anyways. you, buddy. Yeah, cheers. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Lionel Sanders has been our guest. Hold on, everybody. We will be right back.